Hey, hey guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here and today we're going to be talking about gems in New World. I've seen a bunch of you guys have questions on which gems should you put in your armor, which gems on your weapons, do you need to change them for mutations, do you need to just change them for like a normal run of Genesis? So I thought in today's video we'll just do a quick run through of each individual weapon, some recommendations that I have and then also what you should put in your armor for like PvE, PvP, and also mutations. So we'll try and cover like a bunch of different uh, sort of scenarios and give you guys the best idea of what you should be socketing. Now spoilers for this video, you're gonna find me mention the uh, Cut Pristine Opal a lot. Um, this is like the most widely used gem by a significant margin. So I'm just gonna save you guys a little bit of a uh, sort of time and effort. If you just go to the trading post and you search for a, a Cut Pristine Opal, if it's available on your server, cause fresh start, you might not have the ability to cut these yet. You can see on our our server the cheapest is 600 gold but they are going for all the way up to like almost 700 here as well whereas if we take a look at like a cut pristine diamond um by comparison it's significantly cheaper and maybe we'll take a look at like a what, what else have we got like a jasper uh somewhat kind of common yep those are pretty cheap as well uh the carnelian gem obviously used for pretty much uh, all tanks also significantly cheaper so opal is it goes without saying, gonna be the most uh, like commonly used gem and then you're gonna see me just recommend it for pretty much every weapon and it's because it's so easy to trigger. If we just take a look at the gem here, 15% uh, damage when your stamina is not full. It's really easy to meet that criteria because you just press dodge, your stamina is not full and you do 15% extra damage. So if you take nothing else away from this video, just go for, if in doubt, opals out. Um, but let's walk through each individual weapon and what I would recommend. So sword and shield, if you're gonna be playing tank, obviously you wanna go for a carnelian gem. This goes for any tank players in the chat. If you guys don't know, you will need to socket a carnelian gem into your weapon, otherwise your taunts won't be active and uh, you'll lose out in this extra 300% threat. So for tanks, um, and this talks, this is PVE. It doesn't work in PVP. You can't taunt other players in PVP other than by like, you know, teabagging them or whatever. Uh, so for tanks, we need a Carnelian gem. However, it is gonna be that opal if you are just like playing a DPS sword and shield. I know some people do that with the round shield. So opal for DPS or Carnelian for tanks. Looking at the rapier, again, it's just gonna be an opal. You just dodge and then you do extra damage. Nothing else really makes that much sense. On the hatchet, there are actually two choices here opal is going to be one of them funny enough but the other gem that we could potentially look at is the jasper gem so 15 percent damage for two seconds after taking a hit now i still think this criteria is a little bit more difficult to meet than the dodge one but if you are like finding it a little bit difficult or you just want to sort of stand there and click left mouse button like i find some hatchet players want to do myself included you know just stand in sacred ground and let them hit me um then this might be an option that you want to run in the hatchet but i'm still generally going to recommend the opal there spear you guessed it it's just going to be an opal as well there's quite a few things that synergize here the first successful hit with an ability within two seconds of dodging reduces cooldown so you're incentivized to dodge uh, on top of that so you know again more opal synergy with the great x again we're also just looking at the opal with the warhammer we do actually have two valid options funny enough one of them is going to be the opal there is some argument for the jasper but the other thing that we're going to take a look at here is the malachite gem it says 12 percent damage against targets with an active crowd control status effect so slows stuns roots etc um, the warhammer does actually have a capability to apply a lot of stuns um, and slows with the aftershock at no roots but yeah malachite can work with the warhammer and uh, maybe it might be more in its playstyle, so bear that one in mind. Can't save yourself a bit of gold there. With the Great Sword, the Opal just makes the most sense, um, especially when you're in Onslaught mode. Every time you do a charged heavy attack, it costs stamina, so that just naturally triggers the Opal gem right there. So yeah, just definitely Opals out for the Great Sword. Same with the bow here as well. Uh, evasive Tactics, 15% more damage for five seconds after dodging, and also, 15% more damage after you dodge because your stamina is not full. So yeah, opal here. With the musket, there is actually an option to go for an elemental conversion gem. And the reason why this uh, happens is because the musket scales with strength and dexterity. So you can see here on the musket, uh, where is dexterity? There it is. We got dexterity, but we also have intelligence secondary as well. So if you are gonna go for 150 intelligence to pick up the 15% elemental damage, you may wanna convert some of your musket damage to elemental. And by that, I mean you can use something like a ruby or an aquamarine um, or an amethyst or an arcane gem, depending on you know what you what you think is going to be good against a particular enemy you're facing. Now, in quite a lot of cases, it is actually better to run a tier two gem rather than a tier five gem. 
The reasons behind this would just like, I feel like me trying to explain it is gonna make the video take even longer. So I will put a link in the description down below, which explains the difference between um, like low tier and high tier gem scaling. But trust me, after like running through and looking at the numbers, you can see on the screen here, I just sat there and sort of hit them and then wrote the number down, hit them again, wrote the number down. I do consistently find that lower tier gems actually provide more overall damage uh, than the higher tier gems. But the one thing that you have to watch out for is the damage over time. So if it applies a dot, that that does not scale with the gem. So still uh, probably gonna find that an opal will be pretty good, but you may wanna look into a tier two conversion gem specifically for a musket um, if you are running 150 intelligence or more because you get the bonus elemental damage. With the blunderbuss, just like with the musket, it does have a secondary scaling of intelligence. So if you find yourself dipping into uh, 150 intelligence, you may wanna go for an elemental conversion gem, but if in doubt, if you're just going for strength, the opal is gonna be a great choice. With the fire staff, you guessed it, opal is also a great choice, but you could look at a conversion gem here as well. But one thing you have to bear in mind is the sort of uh, burn damage will not be affected by the conversion gem. You can't convert uh, damage over time into uh, a different damage type. So you can't convert your fire dots into like frost dots. It doesn't work that way. The um, conversion gems, I think it even says in the description, if I'm not mistaken, no, it doesn't, but I can tell you that it doesn't work with damage over time. It's only like the direct damage. So your light and heavy attacks and the initial sort of impact of the fireball. So to recap, Opal's probably gonna be the best, but if you wanna give it a bit spicy, you could go with a conversion gem here as well. Life Staff, we actually get something a little bit different here. We're actually gonna be running the Diamond in the Life Staff, and that is because Diamond is the only gem that increases outgoing healing. Pretty much all of the gems in the game are either for uh, applying taunts or they're for doing extra damage, but you don't really wanna taunt with the life staff and you don't care that much about doing extra damage as well so um, you get outgoing healing plus 15 percent outgoing healing while at full health now some people say well what if i'm not full health well just heal yourself dummy you know you've got the heals right here just do that drink a health potion get yourself to full health because then you'll be healing other people for more uh, this is the the gem that makes absolutely the most sense to put in the life staff please never put anything other than a diamond in your life staff if you're healing with it and if you're dpsing with it You've, you're doing your own thing. When it comes to Ice Gauntlet, we have two options, kind of like with the Warhammer. Uh, most people will still run an Opal for the, um, you know, when you dodge and then you can do some extra damage, but some people also choose to go for a Malachite gem. And again, with the Malachite gem, that's because it uh, activates when people are uh, slowed, stunned, or rooted, and the Ice Gauntlet does have a lot of slows. So you could look to take Malachite to save yourself a bit of gold. Opal's still probably gonna be the better option overall because it's 15% damage versus the 12% damage. And, uh, you know, it's kind of easier to just dodge and activate it as opposed to make sure that you have a slow on them because there are going to be some times where you, you don't actually have that slow with the Ice Gauntlet. Lastly, with the Void Gauntlet, yet again, we're going for another Opal gem here. However, if you are going to be healing with the Void Gauntlet, so you're going to be doing uh, something, you know, a little less uh, damage oriented. We're going to take like Orb and Essence Tripture and stuff like that. Again, I do think a Diamond is worth it just to get a little bit of extra healing on your uh, Orb of Decay heal, on your Void Caller passive, and also on your Essence Tripture you can actually get you know some extra boost out of that one so yeah diamond for healers otherwise go for an opal one other thing i want to briefly touch on is combining weapons that don't usually work so say for instance um the life staff hatchet build i'll put a link to that up in the top right if you're curious uh, but in that build we are using an amber gem in my hatchet and sometimes you can use an amber gem in any weapon that you pair with the life staff because you can get the weapons damage to scale off of focus we talked about this with the intelligence conversion gems but if you're using a weapon that doesn't traditionally scale off of the stat um, so say for instance, one build that I'm uh, tempted to try out in the near future is like a Death Knight build that uses a great sword and an ice gauntlet. And I'm actually gonna put like a, quite a few points into intelligence and then put an ice gem into my great sword. Uh, so you can think about it that way. If you are using a, like a less conventional build where you mix and match a, a strength weapon with an intelligence weapon or a dexterity weapon with a with the life staff or something like that, then you could look to go ahead and take the, um, the amber gem the aquamarine and so on and so forth. However, like we mentioned with the musket and the blunderbuss, using a lower tier conversion gem will actually often net you more damage than the higher tier one. And again, we'll put a link uh, to the website that sort of explains 
what's going on there and why that happens. Right now, next thing we're going to talk about is armor. This one is pretty straightforward, as you can see here. Um, and I'm just going to take my camera off. I generally recommend that you go for diamonds in your armor. And this is just covers like most content in the game. Why do we recommend diamonds? Well, they give you some physical damage absorption, but also a little bit of elemental as well. So yeah, most of the damage that you take in New World is going to be physical damage. But there is a little bit of elemental uh, sort of lurking around the corner. There's a few mage enemies in like dungeons as well. But generally, it is mostly physical physical and that's why diamonds are good for that. They cover you for the most physical damage that you're going to take but they've also got that little bit of elemental extra on them as well. The alternative to this if you do want to kind of balance it out a little bit is to go for a malachite. This gives you elemental with a little bit of physical so if you do find that you're dying to uh, mage enemies more often you could look to socket some malachite instead into your armor. Now when it comes to mutations in New World uh, I have a particular strategy that I like to run. Maybe you'll find something different works for you but we have a uh, void here for example. We've got fire down here and obviously there's going to be frost and nature and probably at some point in the future lightning and arcane as well now some people do like to take like full particular gems for that mutation so you know if they're going into an ice mutation then they'll do every single uh, gem slot with a with an ice damage uh, ward here so they'll have aquamarine in every piece of armor what I like to do is just slot in three opal gems so we've got elemental damage absorption elemental damage absorption elemental damage absorption and then these two slots down here and it doesn't have to be necessarily in this order uh, but these two slots down here we have the specific mutation that we're going into so for this particular setup obviously I'd be looking to go into ice mutations and these stay the same throughout so that way I don't need to swap my gems every single time I'm going into a different mutation because I find that will actually add up you know that cost does add up over time and I, I honestly feel like I have enough damage absorption just getting by with two ice gems as opposed to going for the full five. You'll find often with your jewelry, especially if it's crafted, that you can't swap out the gems. But I generally think it's like a bit overkill to swap out the gems in your jewelry here. So leaving those as they are. And like I say, three opal and then it would be uh, aquamarine here or ruby or amethyst or amber, depending on whether you were, you know, which mutation you were facing. One other thing that I'm doing for mutations as well that isn't particularly related to gems, although it kind of is, is we have have a frozen protection here on the amulet and obviously this is useful for uh, frost mutations but I've also got a bunch of other amulets that I've sort of been collecting here as well so we got nature protection on this one we have or we should have yeah flame protection on this one and then this one is like the best example we have void protection and we also have a void protection gem so I would recommend uh, working towards getting stuff like this have uh, basically the same amulet like this but replace void with flame and replace this with a ruby um, and then you can replace this with uh, frost protection and replace this with an aquamarine. So you have an amulet that basically gives you 16% damage absorption against any particular mutation you're going into. And then honestly, at that point, you could probably just go full opals and you wouldn't even need to like swap any gems. But that is going to be a work in progress that I'm looking to do. And I thought I'd share that one with you guys. Now, the last thing to talk about is PVP. Uh, everything with the weapons will stay the same. The one thing that you might want to look to change is your armor gems. Um, so obviously, I'm still wearing the mutation gems right now, but we'd maybe go back to uh, diamond here as I do feel like it's a lot of physical damage, at least for me in PvP. Um, it's usually a lot of great swords and bows and stuff like that. But if you do find there is an abundance of like one particular enemy that you're facing against, like for me in Outpost Rush, there's just bows everywhere. Bows and muskets, bows and muskets in Outpost Rush. You might want to look to take a gem, something like the Cut Pristine Emerald. The bottom option here gives us 5% thrust damage absorption. So if we slap that into a few pieces here, maybe two possibly even three. If you found you're facing against a lot of bows, uh, you could use the Moonstone if you find that you're going against a lot of great swords, which I think is going to be true for a lot of people as well. So yeah, when it comes to PvP, much like it is with the mutations, you can take like two or three uh, armor slots and just go specifically against the damage type that you think you're going to take the most damage from. Now, as with the guides that we've been putting out over the past few weeks, I am going to have a written version of this available on New World Database and the Baggins TV website as well. So if you want to check those out, I'll put links in the description down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, as always, make sure you go ahead and click the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.